Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Grenoble is a place a rabbit is an animal but all this information is not available to the aligner and alignment has received a lot of attention from the NLP community um, the alignment algorithm that we will describe is expectation maximization based there is also hidden mark of model based alignment um, and, and and a few other approaches which are uh, all uh, explorations into how alignment can be achieved but the general point is that we are trying to achieve alignment between parts given alignment of whole okay so two big entities are in alignment how to draw uh, uh, correspondences or alignment between the uh, parts of these two large entities so how to build part alignment from whole alignment now this problem appears for example uh, when uh, we look at a picture or lo look at a scenario there are two pictures created in both the eyes on the retina of the two eyes and so the two eyes images are in alignment two large images are in alignment let's say the image uh, contains a table and a chair and a flower vase and let's say a teacup now the right image has all these four entities the left image also has these four entities it is a still life image now uh, the right image right eyes cup should correspond to left eyes cup this is called the correspondence problem so the two eyes look at the two uh, pictures uh, to uh, look at the same picture same um, entity or a scene and two images are created in uh, two retina now the correspondence has to be established so this is very similar to the alignment problem in machine translation okay and uh, we would like to solve it by expectation maximization now uh, in uh, what happens in uh, scene matching is that uh, many features are used so we can make use of many features on parallel corpora also but we are looking at the raw uh, corpus based alignment so josna please uh, introduce insert this slide on uh, correspondence of two eyes images okay and if you can um, take a picture containing cup plate some piece of furniture uh, that will be uh, that will be nice for making the part <clears throat> So uh, each French word is in correspondence with uh, all the four English words with uniform probability in absence of any other information. Then the computation proceeds. OK, how does the computation proceeds? We will look at the theory in a minute. But this uh, expected count is created from the expression uh, shown here. C is the expected count. T is the alignment probability. So C is expressed in terms of T and then uh, and then T is expressed in terms of C. OK, so we need to look at the theory, but the computation proceeds this way. It is an iterative greedy algorithm. And it maximizes the likelihood of the uh, alignment of the two sentences. Now uh, you can see that uh, the probability of aligning two sentences is a function of probability of word alignment. So the probability of word alignment is the parameter here. OK, and uh, alignment with respect to specific two sentences. Which are hidden. Those are the hidden variables. Expectation maximization requires hidden variables. Now as an interesting uh, piece of information, expectation maximization algorithm is by Dempster and Schaeffer. It got rejected from all um, top journals of that time. And then it was published in some obscure place. 
Then uh, as time proceeded, people saw, saw the power of expectation maximization algorithm. And now this is the most second most cited paper in whole of EECS. The first being a book called Pattern Recognition by Duda and Hart. So Demster Schaefer paper on expectation maximization is the second most cited paper in EECS. And uh, this uh, algorithm depends on uh, two variables. One is the parameter which needs to be estimated. And the other is the hidden variable whose expected count needs to be maintained for this parameter estimation. So uh, on a top level, you see that uh, C is expressed in terms of T and T is expressed in terms of C. So uh, uh, computation of T is the parameter estimation. This is called the maximization step. And computation of C is the expected count this is called the expectation step. Now let's go to the formulation and uh, um, you know, set up the stage, but we'll make a digression to a simpler problem to illustrate expectation maximization. Expectation maximization is one of the most powerful algorithms of probability and statistics and surely a pillar of AI now. So Let's suppose VE is the vocabulary of the language L1, say English. VF is the vocabulary of language L2, say Hindi. So I have uh, this kind of correspondences. What is in a name? Naam mein kya hai? Okay. And uh, uh, that which we call rows by any other name, name will sm smell as sweet. So there's a quote from Shakespeare. What is in a name? That which we call rose by any other name will smell as sweet. So doesn't sound like a very good Hindi translation, but yes, two sentences. What is in a name? Naam mein kya rakha hai, kya hai, or that which we call rose by any other name will smell as sweet. Jisse hum gulab kehte hai, wo aur bhi kisi naam se uski khushbu saman mitha hogi. So these two are parallel sentences. Okay, we have two parallel sentences just like we had in Troya Lapa and Lapa di Grenoble. Now uh, the formulation. So the vocabulary on the English side is what is in a name that which we call rose by any other will smell as sweet. Naam me kya hai jise hum gulab kehte hai aur bhi kisi bhi uski khushbu saman mitha hogi. Some correction needed. So I collect the vocabulary on the Hindi side, collect the vocabulary. And my goal is to establish correspondences. Okay, name to Nam, call to um, Bulana, Kehte, Kehte, Kehna, uh, Saman, <clears throat> as is Saman, sweet, Mitha. So, this kind of dictionary correspondences, we, and this dictionary correspondence probabilities are the parameters which influence the probability of sentence alignment, just like the probability of head. With, this is the parameter of a coin, and that determines how many heads will appear in n tosses of a coin. Okay, so the concept of parameter should be clear in your mind, and the concept of observation. So maximum likelihood estimate tries to give give a probability to the observation, and uh, takes derivative of that observation probability and there by equating it to zero gets the probability of the parameter. So English vocab <coughs> vocabulary is VE, French vocabulary is VF. <coughs> Number of observations of sentence pairs is S. So the data D which consists of S observations looks like this. E11, E12, E1L1 corresponds with 
F11, F12, F1, M1. So uh, notice the notice, notation. The upper right hand suffix is the sentence number. OK, or the parallel sentence number. Then the lower indices are the lower right hand uh, suffixes are the word numbers in those sentences. So similarly, you have E21, E22, E2L2 is F21, F22, F2M2. OK, so this way uh, we proceed and the last parallel sentence is ES1, ES2, ESLS. It corresponds with FS1, FS2, FSMS. So the number of words on the English side in a set sentence is LS. Number of words on the French side in a set sentence is MS. Now, index EESP is the English index of English word ESP in English vocabulary. Index FFSQ is the index of French word FSQ in French vocabulary or dictionary. So, um, so, so see what is going on. We are trying to model a phenomenon. OK, the modeling requires uh, symbols. Requires notation. And the modeling requires mathematical expressions that is called modeling. The phenomenon is that we have parallel English and French sentences. OK, so now this index E ESP FSQ is an important term. This tells me the position of the. Uh, English word ESP, OK, that is the pth word in the asset sentence. Pth word in the asset sentence in the parallel corpus on the English side. Let me repeat this point. I have the parallel corpus. Take the asset sentence. Go to the English side. So it is E. Uh, upper right suffix S. And take the pth word from that sentence. So this is ESP. Similarly, I concentrate on the pth word in the asset sentence in the French side. So index E ESP is the index in the dictionary. Suppose you organize the words in in alphabetical order. So index E ESP is the index of the uh, ESPth word in the dictionary. <coughs> Similarly, for the French word FSQ in the French dictionary. Now we uh, introduce hidden variable ZSPQ. Now you see the parameters uh, did not involve both P and Q. OK, so ZSPQ is equal to one. If in the asset sentence, the pth English word is mapped to qth French word. OK, and uh, Z S P Q equal to zero otherwise. So we are introducing hidden variable Z to capture the uh, correspondence in a parallel sentence pair. OK, so this is introduced. This is not something we are introduced. We're interested in. We are interested in the English dictionary, the French dictionary. And the probability of the correspondence between English dictionary word and the French dictionary word, English dictionary word and the French dictionary word, or the word which appears in the corpus. So the total number of parameters is vocabulary of E into vocabulary of F, where each parameter is as follows. Pij is the probability that the ith word in English dictionary is mapped to jth word in French vocabulary. OK, so for example, the word three in the English dictionary, suppose it occupies the. Let's say uh, um, 450th position. And Troya in on the French side, suppose it occupies the 500 position, then probability of 450 comma 500. Will be uh, the probability of mapping three to Troya. OK, so we are discussing the formulation, which is probably the most important part in the 
mathematical modeling. After that, processing will begin, but you have to set the stage. So in setting the stage, I first decide the symbol, the notation, the expression of various quantities. So let us uh, spend one or two more minutes on this very important slide, which is the heart of EM algorithm. There are something called hidden variables and there are parameters. We are interested in parameter values. We are not interested in hidden variables, but without hidden variables, the parameters cannot be estimated. OK. Because. Though uh, we would like to. Uh, express the probability of observation only in terms of parameters. It becomes cumbersome without hidden variables. Sometimes it is impossible also. So uh, the so note the difference between hidden variable and parameters. Parameters give us word correspondence over the whole corpus. And if I look up on the whole corpus as capturing the whole language, then this is giving me the dictionary correspondence. Hidden variable on the other is giving me correspondence for a specific pair of sentence. Okay. So now uh, we proceed. Now the data likelihood can be expressed in the following way. If we go systematically, then um, this is quite understandable. So we are interested in probability of the English dictionary word mapping to French dictionary word. So this is a probability of index E ESP index F E F S Q raised to the power Z S P Q. So Z S P Q is called the uh, indicator variable. OK, indicator variable. So the data likelihood. Is uh, probability of the dictionary correspondence raised to. The. Uh, the indicator variable uh, indicating. Correspondence between. Pth uh, word on the English side with the word on the French side sentence pair. And if you multiply this over uh, uh, Q's going from 1 to MS, MS is the length of the French sentence, P going from 1 to LS, LS is the length of the English sentence, and over all sentences in the parallel corpus, S equal to 1 to capital S, then you have got the data probability in terms of the parameters P and in terms of the hidden variable Z. OK, so if you reflect on the. Um, justification of this data likelihood, you will get it quite easily. OK. Um, try to formulate the likelihood observation for N head N process of a coin where K heads have been obtained out of N. OK. And uh, then you will see that these two situations are very similar. And to see the power of hidden variable, uh, take two coins, OK, and say that K heads have appeared in N coin tosses, but I don't know which coin has been cho chosen at which point of time. So so the my book on machine translation chapter two. Uh, gives this formulation of expectation maximization through one coin, two coin, then uh, six dice, okay, uh, pretty clearly, and leading to this uh, likelihood expression and expectation maximization for uh, parallel corpora. So this word alignment uh, through expectation maximization is the heart of whole statistical machine translation, statistical SMT. Our SMT rests on this particular algorithm. Now, uh, as is the convention, we work with log likelihood because it is cumbersome to deal with product. You bring it to the log space by converting products to sums. And then, uh, then there is a theory of expectation maximization, which allows me to work with expectation of the log likelihood. OK, E L L D pi. 
and the expectation of these three sums you can show uh, can um, uh, it can go inside and sit on the hidden variable z okay so uh, this expectation can move inside and sit on z okay though uh, there is also the log expression you have to apply the convexity uh, idea log 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 is a concave function so we have to apply those uh, notions and have this expression now we oh, introduced the uh, yeah sir? Yeah. Uh, yes. Yeah, in this uh, in this slide, uh, why didn't we means uh, uh, on which variable are we taking the expectation for the hidden variable? Uh, so, uh, and why did we not put expectation on the uh, means? How did we uh, take the expectation inside exactly? Uh, there should be expectation on log two. Yes. 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 So, you. Um, you make use of the fact that log is a concave function okay and then uh, so i refer to you the paper by seen borman seen borman okay so um, uh, just look at how concavity and uh, an upper bound idea is used by which uh, this expression can be arrived at Okay, I'll send you the send the reference to the WhatsApp list, and then can it can be placed on Moodle and um, MS Teams. So take a look at that treatment there. Hmm? Okay, so sir, for now just for now just accept that this expression is okay. Yes. Sir. Okay. So, hmm. And then now you introduce the Lagrangian. So j equal to one to vf p i j equal to one for all i. And then I can introduce uh, lambda i uh, for um, for capturing all these constraints. Okay, so notice that there will be um, so, so j goes from one to vf. Okay, so p i j equal to one. So on the English English side, I take the ith word. Ith dictionary word from the English side, then it can map to any word J on the French side. So that's why P I J J going from one to V F equal to one. Okay, and then I do it for all English words, and I varies from one to V E. So each equation will give rise to one Lagrangian. So that's why I equal to one to V lambda I, and inside that. We have sigma j equal to one to vf p i j minus one. So, um, having introduced the Lagrangian and going to the dual of the optimization problem, then I have this expression, likelihood expression, which uh, should be uh, differentiated with respect to p. Okay, so uh, so I have this. Uh, I have this uh, expression after differentiation with respect to Pij. Then I have uh, sigma s equal to 1 to capital S, P1 to LS, Q1 to MS, delta. Delta is the Kronecker delta. Okay. Um, when uh, index E, EPS is equal to I, this delta is 1. Index F, FSQ, comma J. So index f f s q should be equal to j. Then this delta is i. Second delta is one. Okay, and then this expectation of z s p q divided by p i j comes from differentiating the log. Okay, and then minus lambda equal to zero. So from this, by rearranging terms, I get p i j equal to one by lambda i. This three sigma expression and then this deltas multiplied by expectation of Z SPQ. 
Now applying the constraint that j equal to 1 to vf pi j equal to 1, I uh, come to this expression that 1 by lambda i and this complete term summed over j equal to 1 to f must be equal to 1. So these mathematical steps I'm just showing in front of you, uh, you will see that this follows very systematically one after the other. Then from that, the M step comes out to be equal to uh, Pij. This is the quantity we are very interested in, Pij, ultimately interested in. So this is in terms of S going from 1 to capital S, the whole corpus size, P going from 1 to LS, the number of uh, English words on the sth sentence pair, q equal to 1 to ms, the number of French words on the French side for the sth parallel sentence, and the uh, Kronecker delta where uh, x comma y, if x is equal to y, then delta equal to 1, two Kronecker deltas, and multiplied by expectation of Z SPQ. Then there is a normalizing factor which turns this probability value into a probability value between 0 and 1 and ensures that all these PIJs sum to 1 when J goes from 1 to VF. And this is for all I and J pair. And the expectation step E Z SPQ is in terms of the probability of this index E and index F, which is the parameter we are interested in, divided by uh, a normalizing factor for all possible S, P, and Q. So uh, this mathematics is very elegant and uh, follows very systematically step by step, though the expressions look somewhat fearful, hmm, some complex term, but they are actually not. They come very systematically. So now, um, now if I uh, go back to the uh, the Troya Lapa three rabbits example, I'll see that this same theory is expressed there, okay, uh, through the E step and P I J step, okay, with a bit of readjustment. Let's see uh, what is the adjustment there. OK, so I start with uh, W, X, Y, Z and A, B, C, D. W mapping with 1 by 4 probability to any of the English words. Then uh, uh, this is the first step. OK, and this is parameter estimation because I'm interested in probability of Lapa mapping to rabbit, for example. Now, uh, this is the calculation. The expected count of A mapping to W, A, B, C, D, three rabbits of Grenoble. No, A, B, C, D is Troya, Lapa, the Grenoble. And W, X, Y, Z is three rabbits of Grenoble. So look at this expression. Semicolon means Given the parallel sentence AB maps to WX, Troya Lapa, three rabbits. I want to know the expected count of A mapping to W. So that is uh, Troya mapping to three. This will be equal to T of A mapping to W. Right now it is one by four. Hmm? I've started with the initial engine step. T mapping to uh, A, uh, probability of A mapping to W divided by probability of A mapping to W and A mapping to X because the parallel corpus is AB maps to WX into number of times A appears in AB into number of times W appears in WX. This is one and one. And uh, T mapping to A to W is 1 by 4. T mapping to A to X is also 1 by 4. So I get the expected count to be half. Okay. 
Now uh, the expected count is what is expected count? Expected count is probability of a random variable into value of the random variable over all possible values. That is the definition of expectation. Now this formula is uh, actually giving you that uh, expected count. Okay, and this is uh, this is identical to. Okay, you, you should see it by sitting with the you know, formula and staring at it for some time. This is actually the application of this um, E. Okay, Exp application of this E formula, expectation formula, expectation of Z S P Q. So. So I'm interested in the so notice that I'm using expected count there and expectation of the indicator variable here. Indicator variable is ZSPQ. So uh, those of you who have you know some uh, good insight into probability know that count and indicator variable are uh, actually in one to one correspondence. OK, if you want to count how many times. Some uh, entity appears. You can count how many times the indicator value. Takes the value takes the indicator variable takes the value one. OK, so expectation of an indicator variable. Gives you the expected count also. OK. So I take the example of how many heads are there in n tosses of a coin. Let's say k heads. So for each toss, I notice the uh, value of the indicator variable. Is it head or tail? If it is head, indicator value is one. OK, otherwise it is zero. So expected value of indicator variable is equal to expected count of the quantity of interest. OK, so expectation of ZPQS is nothing but the expected count of how many times okay, P corresponds with Q. So this is uh, this this probability of index E comma index F gives you uh, the value of one by four, which you saw in the uh, numerator, and then this sigma is the sum of other correspondences. Okay, notice that here Q dashed is introduced instead of Q. Okay, it is all mathematical uh, process. So uh, three corres I have Troya Lapa, three rabbits. Troya mapping to three divided by Troya mapping to three plus Troya mapping to Lapa. Okay, so this is the summation here. Okay, and above I have the Correspondence of, correspondence of 3 are going to 3. Now you may ask how come the count of the times it appears in the in the English side and count of the time it appears in the French side. How come they are coming? OK, they are coming because there we are asking for expected count. Here we are asking for the expected value of the indicator variable. But expected value of indicator variable is in one to one correspondence with expected count of the random variable. OK, so that you must uh, convince yourself and uh, see that indeed our uh, expressions are correct. So let's proceed with uh, some example calculation. So I have found the expected count of A corresponding to W. 
and once I have got the uh, uh, expected counts, okay, this, these are the expected counts by applying the, uh, 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 the ideas that we have seen just now. So, uh, sir, sir, hmm. oh, means what does this double arrow mean? Double arrow, mean? Double arrow means uh, parallel corpus. So uh, why didn't we take in the first step A, B, C, D to W, X, Y, Z? Means why only A, B to W, X? A, B to W, X because I'm getting the expected counts sentence pairwise. So you see there are two tables here. First table is for A, B corresponding to W, X. Three rabbits, Troya Lapa. And the second table is three rabbits of Grenoble. Troya oh, Lapa. Okay. Huh? Got it, got it. So I... Hmm. So I have to get these expected counts for every pair of um, parallel corpus. OK, so the expected counts have been obtained by the calculation shown in the previous slide. Now when I have the expected counts, I can revise the probability. So T revised of A uh, mapping to W is half expected count divided by um, divided by expected count in the a, in the first parallel sentence ab going to wx and the second parallel sentence bcd going to xyz so let's see if this is uh, the case from the table so i have uh, the expected count. OK, now uh, this is the re revision of the probability. Let's also go to the theory. Which gives me the parameter probabilities. The parameter probability is you see. In terms of expectation of the indicator variable. OK. And uh, there is a summation which is on the French side, okay, which is on. And uh, here J, J is introduced. Okay, here J is introduced and J keeps on varying. So the probability of IJ, first of all, is um, coming from the SH sentence, S going from, small s going from. 1 to capital S. So first of all, you will have to take the um, take the count from all parallel sentences. OK, so this expectation of ZPQS, the indicator variable for now, you map it to expected count. Of P and Q mapping. And I find out the expected count of P and Q mapping in the SH sentence. And I do it for all sentences in the parallel corpus I have. OK. And then I also divide it for the sake of normalization. By uh, by uh, by 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 another quantity. Which is here, so let's go back to the count for two parallel sentences. T revised. T revised of A going to W. So uh, let us see. If I have uh, A going to W. Count coming from both the parallel corpus. I have half coming from here. And I have uh, zero coming from BCD XYZ. OK. So the two counts are taken. Now I have to do normalization. The normalization is coming from the quantity in the denominator. So half plus half plus zero plus zero. So that's coming from the first table, half plus half plus zero plus zero. And uh, the other zero plus zero plus zero plus zero is coming from BCD going to XYZ. OK, so 
the numerator is capturing how many times A is in correspondence with W over the whole corpus. Denominator is how many times A is correspondence with any other word okay, over the whole corpus. So that is the normalization which is happening. And this is in consistency with um, the formula that we derived by expectation maximization. Now, the key point here is expectation of indicator variable is expected count. That correspondence is crucial there. So, Jyotsna kindly add this slide. Expectation of indi indicator variable is expected count. So, see, all this is uh, quite systematically falling in place. First, we get the count from the probability values. You can see a, a mechanical way of doing it. Just see how many times A and W are in. Uh, what is the probability of A to W from the matrix? And uh, what is the probability of A going to W and A going to any other word? This is for a particular parallel pair. Multiply it by the number of times A appears in AB and W appears in WX. So this gives me the expected count. Make sure you're very clear about these expected count and it is conforming to the definition of expectation, the mathematical definition of expectation. Expectation is probability into value over all possible values. Don't, don't forget that. And from the expected count, by a normalizing procedure. What is a normalizing procedure? Just look at the whole parallel corpus and see for how many uh, parallel sentences you can collect the count of A corresponding to W. Divided by how many times does A go to other words in the first parallel sentence, other words in the second parallel sentence, in the third, fourth, fifth, and so on. So uh, essentially this expression is total number of counts of A and W over the whole corpus divided by total number of counts of A with any other word parallel sentence wise over the whole corpus. So when I do that, I get a revised probability table. Now W corresponds to A with probability half. Earlier it was one fourth. W corresponds to B with probability 1 by 4 to C and D 0, 0. That is expected because uh, W3 appears only in the first sentence. Three rabbits, Troya Lapa. Oh, sorry, W is Troya. So Troya Lapa, three rabbits, appears only in the first sentence. Lapa the Grenoble, rabbits of Grenoble. Three doesn't appear in the second sentence pair at all and Troya doesn't appear there. So why should uh, Troya be corresponding to uh, off Grenoble? C is off, D is Grenoble, and W is Troya. Since uh, this uh, uh, second sentence, only second sentence contains C and D, okay? And uh, W appears only in the first sentence. So see how the uh, revised probability takes care of this reality. And this is happening because of the Kronecker delta expression point term, which came in the derivation of the uh, parameters and the expected values. Okay, so see how the correction has happened. And we also see that X, which is Lapa, its probability has increased to 5 by 12 for B. Earlier it was 1 by 4. Okay, 1 by 4. So which is 3 by 12, now it is 5 by 12. And other probability values have been correspondingly depressed. So just uh, make sure that uh, uh, this, this particular point is seen, that this is the revised probability table. Sir, move sir. to, yeah. Uh, so in the table, why, is, uh, why isn't the sum of probabilities in a row not equal to one. Oh, it should have been yes. Um, 
Let us see. Yeah, it should have been. This correction has to be done, OK? So this 1 by 2 plus 1 by 4, revised probability table. This is the pre-normalized pre revised probability table. I think I should make introduce no, sir, another way. Uh, it's like summing up to 1 in a column, but uh, it's working nicely in a column. But uh, if we change the row probability, then it might not sum in the column. Then if you have, so, uh, let's say, yeah. nice. Maybe a mistake. Maybe I should really change the rows to columns. So WX, I'll just check this. Okay. So uh, it's a one more doubt. Uh, so in the previous, while, while revising probability in the denominator, uh, in the numerator, we had half for A to mm. W case. Uh, mm. Let's say for B to X case, it would be mm. half plus one by three, right? Mm. You are talking about uh, revised counts, you mean? Uh, while pro calculating probability for B2X. Uh, yes, B2X. Sure. Yes. So, uh, means uh, in, in the expression uh, mm. uh, for calculating the probability, mm. we would have counts of 1 by 2 plus 1 by 3 in the numerator, right? For B2X. Mm. Mm. Like here it is so, half. Uh, no, one sec, sorry. Um, okay, I have got the counts. Now, A, B, X, Y, I'm sorry. So, A, B, W, X, Y, Z. W, X, Y, W, X, Y, Z is the, are the rows, columns are A, B, C, D. And then W, X, Y, Z, columns are A, B, C, D again. So, that's okay. Uh, so, rows and columns are fine. Achha, now, you are, uh, your question is with respect to this particular slide, T device. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. In this slide, for B, if it was B two X, hmm. then what would we have been in the numerator? Oh, B two X. Okay, let us see B two X. B two X. So I have to collect count of B X correspondence from everywhere. So B X correspondence I see here as half. Okay. And BX correspondence is one by three. Yes. So yes, both will be added, right? Okay, sir. Yeah, thank you. Both will be added. Yes. So, uh, so as I said, the numerator will collect their correspondence from all parallel sentences for a particular pair of words, and then it you have to divide it by all possible correspondences over the whole corpus. Okay. So yeah, so I think um, maybe the row and column have to be have been interchanged. So I'll, I'll take a look at this and correct it. So then from revised probability, I get the revised count. From revised count, I get the re-revised probabilities. So here I am finding that the X to B probability is really I 85 by 144. So the rabbit and lapa correspondence is gradually weaning. Hmm? And this, ha this has a double effect. It uh, brings up the winner. It also brings up the losers. So the losers will uh, show that yeah, X cannot really correspond to C or D. W, for example, could not correspond to C and D because C and D do not appear in the first pair and W appears only in the first pair. So similarly, you can see that A's column values are becoming 0, 0 for Y and Z. Okay. Uh, A is 3 and Y and Z are uh, D Grenoble. So they do not come in the uh, first sentence. So they, this, this probabilities become 0. So Y cannot correspond to A. Z cannot correspond to A. So this way the algorithm continues and uh, is, is this is an example of expectation maximization applied to a very important task in machine translation. This is a fine example of linguistics and uh, probability coming together. Okay, it's a very nice example of this and this alignment was thought about in 1990s in the AT&T Bell Labs. And uh, before that, computer vision community was, you know, toying with this for correspondence problem of image 
uh, matching in the two retina of the eye. So this situation of two entities being in correspondence and from there deriving their parts to be in correspondence is a fundamental operation in AI. In a fundamental operation in whole of intelligence, I would say. Okay, so you uh, infer something about a part from a behavior of the whole. So this, this is very fundamental to intelligence. Um, and uh, uh, let me also show you another thing, which is the chapter two of my book, where um, this discussion on expectation maximization is done first through so first I take through of a single coin, which introduces maximum likelihood. And then I introduce throw of two coins, which introduces hidden variable. OK, Z and the corresponding uh, uh, expectation and maximization steps. So you see here the probability P1, P2 and P. P is the probability of choosing the first coin. P1 is the probability of head from the first coin. P2 is the probability of head from the second coin. So this formulation. And then generalization for throw off more than one something where that something has more than one outcome. So it proceeds this way. And we have these expressions of expectation and maximization and maximization. So the E step comes out to be this quantity. M step comes out to be for pi j and p j k. And from there, I go to the derivation of alignment probabilities in this way of development. One coin, two coin, uh, something which has multiple outcomes, and then take it to alignment. So that treatment is quite easily understandable. OK, so I'll uh, stop here. Um, and take any questions if there are any. Right, sir. So Saurav asks, mm. shouldn't there be a constraint for French to English mapping as well? That is, sum from i is equal to 1 to i is equal to v underscore e, where mm. the probability of i uh, ij is equal to 1 for all j. Mm. You're right. So if you are using, for example, Moses, uh, which is a statistical machine transform system. And that uses something called Giza aligner. So Josna kindly also mentioned these systems. Moses system for SMT and within that Giza aligner. So uh, the phrase table construction is a unidirectional uh, process. So you create the phrase table from English to French. And that phrase table need not be same as when you create from French to English. So uh, expectation maximization algorithm has a directionality. OK, we are fixing on English and going to French. OK, and that's why uh, the constraint is on the French side. Um, so the Giza aligner also allows you to uh, get these probabilities when um, uh, you it actually uh, mentioned the probabilities from both sides english to french side and french to english side okay so i don't have time to cover all those details but uh, it's a good question expectation maximization has a direction okay which is the source angle language which is the target language uh, it may not satisfy you completely completely but uh, yeah this is the best possible answer right now Saurav asks, we require expected count of A mapping to W. Then mm. why are we counting every occurrence of A and every occurrence of W? I think we should just count uh, less than A, oh, A to W mappings. Example for AAB mapping to WXW, count should be one rather than four, right? I don't think I understand the question. Can you ask the question? Sir, so, oh. so if the parallel corpus is... Uh, mapping a a b to w x w then uh, then when we when we why are we multiplying the counts of a with counts of w we should just count where a is mapping to w right 
because here a is also mapping to x and b is also mapping to w will we take those also in our expectation count oh you are referring to the c formula yes sir c formula where we uh, came from 1 by 4 to 1 by 2 that that formula yes sir yes sir there yes, it yes, was a just a was just mapping to w so there was no confusion but if a is also mapping to other things and other things are also mapping to w then Ah, then what do we do? So, so you're referring to this expression. Right. Why are we counting W also? Is is that your question? So, so if the parallel corpus is A A B and W X W, then what will be the this thing formula? Oh, A A B and W X W. A A B. A A B. I see. A A B mapping to W X W. So here A is mapping to W, A is mapping to X, and B is mapping to W. Ah, so no, it's OK. I can see it. We require expected count of A mapping to W. Then why are we counting every occurrence of A and every occurrence of W? If, what do you mean by every? I mean, we are multiplying the number of A in the left hand side with the number of W in the right hand side. We are not uh, seeing whether it is mapping to A or not. So, so just you can just explain the example that will make it clear. Ah, the so last part. Uh, okay, A A B mapping to W X W A A B A A B A A B mapping to W X W count should be one rather than four, right? A A B. Which count? The expected count or actual count? So we have uh, the probability multiplied by count of A into count of W. Uh -huh. Okay. So that will give me four, but I don't think it's correct. Okay, thank you then.